right, they're closing the doors. All right. Well, thank you, everybody. Hopefully, everybody's having a good day. Hopefully, Autodesk University is going great for you guys. Um, thank you for taking time out of your busy schedules to sit in my class today. So this is PBR Materials for Revit. I'm Josh Radel. I'm a product manager for ATG USA. Yes, this is my fluffy family, my fluffy dog, my husband. I have a wife and two beautiful daughters who you know, got me wrapped around their little fingers. Um, I'm a product manager in visualization programs and BIMBOX computers. Um, I do training consulting for architects, engineers, and general contractors across the world. So what are we going to be talking about today? What is physically based rendering? We're going to talk about what are the different materials that make up a, a PBR material in Revit, because with the rise of the 2019 physically accurate materials came a whole new way to push our renders to the next level. So we're going to talk about what each one of those materials mean. We're going to look at where to find them in Revit 2019 and 2020, because 2020 has got a little bit more than 2019 does. We're going to look at how to create our own materials from scratch if we didn't want to use the ones that are built into Autodesk Revit. So we're going to look at a couple free websites. So we like free stuff, which is good. We're going to look at a couple paid places, too, to find stuff. And then we're going to look at Revit rendering the cloud using Autodesk Ray Tracer. And then after all that's done, we're going to look at how it can enhance our real-time rendering experience. We're going, to look, we're going to look at Enscape for a little bit and then close out with some questions. You know, and I'll stick around afterwards, too, if you guys got any other questions. More than happy to answer them. So, I just want to apologize right away for anybody that thought this was a professional bull riding class. You know, I was, I was not able to get the mechanical bull in here. And I also do apologize. They wouldn't let me bring PBR, like, <laughs> beer into it. I tried. I tried. They wouldn't let me. I'm sorry. But if you guys want, we can go out afterwards and we can get beers and talk some more. <laughs> so more than happy to do that. All right. So what is physically based rendering? Physically based rendering is a way of creating materials that um, accurate respond to light. So when we're talking in terms of like visual effects in the game industry, why do these games and visual effects look so good nowadays? It's because they're all using physical based rendering. Well, with, with technology getting so much better these days, the AEC, the AEC, AEC, AEC industry, sorry about that, is um, trying to push our renders to the next level in our real time rendering experiences. So Autodesk created the 2019 materials to mimic how a PBR system works. So it's very much theory-based and it's measured on surface values. So we're going to look at a couple different material values that can make up a physically, physically accurate material. So what are benefits of physical-based rendering? Well, it removes the guesswork when trying to render an image. So now we can have confidence knowing that our renders are going to look good in all different lighting conditions. Whereas traditionally, we'd have to sit there and make certain materials to you know, look good in a night scene, look good in a daytime scene, look good in a midday scene. Well, now we can have confidence knowing that they're going to look good in all different lighting scenarios because it's accurately responding to the light. It will also help us develop a texture standard throughout our company. So we know every time you know, my guy over here in this company is doing one, my guy in this other office, we're all going to be working on the same texture standards. We're all going to have four or five different materials that are going to be set up for every material map. And it will help provide a more photorealistic rendering for us because you know, our clients always want bigger and better. So how can we provide a more photorealistic rendering for them? Like if I could show you what your building is going to look like before it's even built with all the materials and how it's actually going to look in this lighting condition, that's money right there. That's kind of cool. So to better understand PBR systems, we need to understand, we're just going to take a little overview of how light works. We're not going to get into the super details. I provided links in the handouts to a bunch of different websites where they, they go really deep into it. Like there's equations and everything like that. When you guys get a chance, check them out. Well worth a read. So how does light work? Well, when light encounters an object, it's going to do one of a couple things. It's going to be reflected. It's going to be absorbed depending on the material. And then it's going to be reflected out or refracted out. So how do reflections work? Well, when a reflection when an incoming light, or when a reflection hits an object, the light bounces off. You know, mirrors have, are super smooth, so the light's going to bounce straight off. Well, more rough materials are going to reflect light not so good. So they're going to be blurry reflections. Energy conservation. So who stepped on sand on the beach and it's super hot? Right? Yeah, we've all done it. Yeah. So that's energy conservation. Different materials absorb, absorb heat. You know, they reflect a little bit, but they also absorb heat. So this is called energy conservation. We can see here the light rays coming in. It's being reflected out. And some of the light is being conserved. So that's why it's not you know, super reflective, because certain types of materials only reflect so much. 
how does refraction work? We've all seen this image of the straw when we put, our, we'll put a straw in a glass and it looks bent. Well, what's it doing? Refraction is when a light wave changes direction as it passes through a piece of glass from one medium to another. So this is determined by the index of refraction, which we're going to look at in Revit. We can dial in these material, we can dial in these values, but they're already preset up in Revit. Thank you, Autodesk, for that. So we didn't have to you know, go find index of refractions for certain type of materials. They're already preset up for us, which is really nice. For now, we've all seen it. We're looking at water straight down. We can see to the bottom, but when we look at an angle, we can't see it. You know, or look farther out. That's the Fresnel value. Everything has Fresnel. Like when I'm looking at this pole right here, like when I, when I get closer, I can look straight down. But when I look at it from an angle, I can't really see much. It's just super reflective like that. That's the Fresnel effect, which we can simulate in the new 2019 materials. All right, now that we understand how light works, again, we just did a broad overview. Don't want to bore you guys with super math equations or anything like that. So a couple of common material types that we're going to see in a PBR system. Albedo and diffuse. Who's got 3DS, Max, Maya experience? Any, a couple people. So you guys may have heard the term diffuse map. Well, diffuse map is a color map. Again, albedo map's the same thing, but it's a little bit different. And it, has, it takes all the shadows out because I don't want my shadows baked into my texture. I want to control those separately, okay? So albedo map is just the same thing as a diffuse map with the shadows taken out of it. A roughness map. It's controlling the surface imperfections. So now I can sit there and do the surface imperfections of my material. So now I can really dial in that photorealism because you know, we've all tried to do like a perfect metal. Well, that's fine, but we want to tell the story of these materials. Like that adds to the character of it. That adds to the realism of these materials. That's what adds those fine details. So that's what we would do with a roughness map. We'll see in a couple websites where we can download it. It'll have a glossiness map. Well, the glossiness map is just an inverted image of the roughness map, wherever it's dark images are going to be more reflective and shiny, wherever it's white are not going to be, they're going to be diffuse. So if you guys see that glossiness map, it's the same thing, you can use it, just invert it. We can do that in Revit too. A couple other ones. Everybody knows bump map, right? Everybody knows what a bump map is. Wherever it's black is recessed, wherever it's white is raised up. Well, in a PBR system, we can use a normal map. So traditionally in a game engine like Unity or Unreal, um, when you're flying around your scene, you know, looking down on bump maps, cool, but what happens when you go at an angle? It looks flat. It looks just like a flat object. A normal map is used to simulate, so the RGB values. So in a 3D space, you have X, Y, and Z coordinates, red, green, and blue. That's why it's a purple map. I call it the purple one. You know, I'm from Minnesota, oh, geez, I'm sorry. <laughs> so I'm from Minnesota, so a little Ode to Prince right there. Um, so what the normal map is doing, it's shooting out rays from each pixel in an X, Y, and Z coordinate system. So when you're spinning around your model and even you're going at an angle, it's still going to simulate a 3D effect. It's going to look 3D without using any displacement maps. Because with a displacement map, Revit can't do a displacement map yet. Hopefully one day it will. Displacement would actually displace the geometry, but it would increase the file size because you'd get more geometry. So a normal map is a way to fake 3D geometry. So we're tricking, the, we're tricking the viewer, essentially. Another part that we're going to see in the, in the PBR materials for Revit is you have an advanced highlight. Well, what we can do for that, we can stick an ambient occlusion map in there because I don't want my shadows, or I, want, I don't want light going in these individual cracks of my model. So we can see here, like, I don't want light going in there. Those are cavities. I don't need light to go in there. That's what adds the detail to these materials. So those were a couple different material types that we're going to see in Revit. So a couple ways we can do this in Revit. There's a, a couple base materials that we can start with to build our own from scratch. So who's looked at the 2019 materials and seen the yellow triangle on the materials? Everybody? Yep. Don't be alarmed. Your, your materials are not broken, OK? That just means it's a legacy material. So that means it's not set up to be a physically accurate material. It doesn't have the parameters that we just talked about. So I'll show you where these materials are. But, so these are a couple of the base materials. Well, what do these base materials mean? So the layered material, who's wanting to create really cool granite and carbon fiber and everything? Yeah. So now we can do that with these layered materials. It's a way to simulate granite materials that have like a top coat layer, like car paint, everything. So you have your underlying layer, then you have your top layer. Again, this is how we can start dialing in these real materials. So we can see the parameters here on what these materials have. We have roughness. We talked about roughness, right? We talked about color, so we can put a color map in there if we'd like to. 
So these were three materials that were created using the layer map. So we can see now that they have images put in there, which we're going to learn how to create, we're going to learn how to find. Hey, look, there's a purple map. Oh, map. We talked about that. We talked about each one. We're going to talk about each one of these materials, but you can see how these are set up. So again, when you guys get a free minute, I encourage you to check out these materials, kind of break them down, just see what they're about. Like, how were they built? It's kind of interesting, kind of cool. You know, I do it. I'm a nerd like that. So the metal materials. The metal materials are good for iron, aluminum, those types of materials, things like that. Um, again, so you can see it has a roughness value in there. Again, we can change that too if we need it. So again, we have a nice polished brass material right here, which looks nice, right? But what about this polish, what about this brass that's got a little bit of age to it? Kind of adds a little bit more story to it, right? And it kind of adds more life to it. That's what we're trying to do here. We're trying to do more photorealistic, photorealistic renderings. So we can see the roughness tab was, um, or the roughness value was taken away by the roughness map because we're using that texture to do our surface, or do our surface reflections. Next up is the opaque material. Now these materials are good for anything that's not transparent, like ceramics, wood, carpets, these types of things. Again, we're gonna look at, if you guys don't wanna start from scratch, we can use these base materials here to start from, or we can use these pre-built pre materials to already start from, if you guys want, okay? There's multiple different ways to do it, so. So there's three materials that we use creating that. I really love this floor material, I use it all the time for it, it's super cool. Um, but yeah, you can see we have our albedo map, our roughness, our bump map, and our ambient occlusion map. So, and then again, for this plastic, we just have a color image and we have some roughness values turned up you know, to what an actual plastic material would represent and, re and respond to in real life. Oh, no worries, you're fine. So the transparent materials. These are good for all types of glass, water, like acrylic, things like not big glass panels. We'll look at that next. So you know, again, we could use these for like glasses like on, on our table and everything, or like little in, intricate trinkets and everything. So what's really cool is you can put a normal map in there and now you can simulate frosted glass. Who's tried to do frosted glass before and it sucks? <laughs> Everybody, yep, yeah, right, yep. Yeah. Well now we can simulate that all in here with a normal map. Kind of cool, right? So, and again, we have over here just some acrylic amber. Again, these are all in Revit. I haven't gotten outside Revit yet, so. These are really cool, they come with them already. So we can see, look, we talked about index of refraction. These are already pre-set up you know, to simulate how actual materials in the real world would work. So thank you Autodesk for that. Next up, is, or last up is the glazing materials. So a little bit different from the transparency materials. Glazing materials are used for like big panels of glass and everything, you know, when we're doing like windows and everything. So here's a couple of materials that were created. Here's what they look like. You know, down to the nitty gritty of them. So we can see it's already dialed in for transmissive roughness. All we gotta do is change the color. We can change the roughness a little bit depending on that. Most of the time you can go to the manufacturer's website and they'll tell you some of these values so you can just go plug them in. Kinda cool, right? All right, what if we don't wanna use the materials that are in Revit, okay? But first off, let's go find where those are. What? Skipping ahead, sorry. So where those base materials are, if you go under miscellaneous right here, you go to this base material, there's where those materials are found. But what if I just wanna go find some ones that are already there? So now I can go under carpet, notice the ones with the yellow triangle. You guys see that okay? Here's ones that don't have the yellow triangle. So these ones are, like I was talking about, already pre-set up for, to be physically accurate. So I can just scroll through I can, I already have my carpet selected, but I want to change that to wood flooring. Well, this one's kind of cool. I like that one. Sweet. So again, now I can start changing this up if I need to. I can pull this down. I can change my register settings to production to kind of get a better visual of how my material is going to look just from the preview window. Again. So now if I were to add in the normal map, here's a little trick behind it. I have to hit the drop down, and that's where I can add in the normal map. Tip, don't put a normal map and have it set to height map. It's gonna get black and splotchy. Because Revit's gonna look for the purple values, but, or no, Revit's gonna look for black and white values, but we don't, we have purple values. So you're gonna confuse Revit real quick. So it has to be set to a normal map. So if you ever see splotchiness in your, in your renders, switch that, and if you're using a normal map. So, 
that's where some of these materials are. Again, if you guys would like, I created a couple different folder categories, just ADXK libraries, if you guys would like. Email me, I'd be more than happy to pass these off to you. These are all built in from Reddit. I can't share any of the ones that I've downloaded because they're not my materials, so being respectful of the owners that create them, but these are all built into Reddit. I just sorted them out so you guys can find them a little bit easier. Again, just email me, I'll be more than happy to pass those files off to you. So, but what if we want to create our own materials? What if I'm like, ah, I just, these ones, I want, I want something different, okay. Well, there's a couple of different free websites out there. So, there's this, ah, mouse. So there's this one called Texture Haven that I always go to. Texture Haven, this guy goes out, he creates these materials for free and just pass them out. Bless this guy's heart. Like, yeah, amazing. So what if I'm looking for some nice wood flooring? Well, now I can click on these materials. Hey, look, I get all these material maps for free. I didn't have to go create them myself. I can just go download them myself. Again, we already know where to plug them into Revit because we've, we've done this. We know what we're doing. We're good. Okay? A couple things we don't need. We don't need a displacement map. If you're doing like Unreal Engine, 3ds Max, those types of programs, those will support a displacement map. Revit, at the moment, does not. So we don't need it. But again, if we want to go farther with that, we can definitely go in there. All we really need is an ambient occlusion map, a normal map. If we want, we can take the bump map too. The diffuse, again, we know the diffuse is the albedo map, the color, that's where we get our color information. And the roughness map. The reference map is going to do the surface imperfections. So we can download those. Yeah. Just hit download. So then we get a couple different options here. Use your discretion. If you're doing real-time rendering, probably don't put an AK texture in there. <laughs> Just unless you get a sweet machine, I, I would shy away from it. But so I usually stay around the 2K version. Just I have a video game design background, so 1K, 2K was just fine doing Unity and Unreal. So that's where I usually stay. So we can take the 2K version. So again, we're not going to sit there and let that download, but that's how easy it is. So another couple ones. This guy from 3dtextures.me. So a program we're going to look at next after this is called Substance. Well, Substance was used to create the 2019 materials because Substance is the industry standard for visual effects and game industry and creating PBR materials. So we're going to look at a program called Substance Alchemist in a bit. That's the newest design tool for architects. It's a way to create rapid material creations. So this guy uses Substance to create these materials. So kind of cool. So we can check out some different types of bricks. Here we go. Oh yeah, not bad. And look, I get all my material maps that I need for free. If you want, you can buy the coffee and you can get the substance SPSA, SPSAR file. We're going to talk about what that means in a second. Okay? It's really cool. I promise. So those are two free websites that I always go to. There's another one called Polygon that's extremely good. They have a couple paid, paid sites on there too, but well worth the money, especially because you can get anything you want on there. You just find them, download them, throw them in your renders, money. So what are we going to look at next? So we saw a couple free websites. So now we're going to check out Substance Alchemist. Okay. Well, first we're going to look at a program called Substance Player because it's free. It's even better. So Substance Player, I can go and download that SPSA, SPSAR file that I was talking about. And now I can bring in here. Private family creators in the room, creating parametric families. What if you could create a parametric material? Kind of cool. So these SPSA, SPSAR files, they were created using Substance Designer. Substance Designer is used to create high quality materials, parametric materials, all this stuff. You can dial in, like we can see here, we can dial into different mix. So we can do different vertical mixes. You know, again, this is the type of stuff we can start creating here. This is a free plugin right here, Substance Player. So if I mix that with a subscription to Substance Source, where they have all these SPSAR files, and look, they have a home decoration collection, they have a building, all these materials, you can get the substance files and then you can rapidly change them out like this. Not too shabby, huh? Like, kind of cool, yeah. So now we're creating rapid iteration, different materials. So once I like that material, look, here's all my color images that I now know where to put in Revit. 
I would just export as a bitmap. I tell it where I don't want. I tell it where I want to go. I tell it what file type I would like, and I keep working. Not too bad, huh? Any questions so far? What was that file type again? SBSAR. Yeah, substance substar file. We call it substar file. So it's basically like substance. Like pretty much think of it as like a Reddit or RFA file. Yep, you can download JPEG. You can download JPEG, PNG here too. So. One better than the other? One's just higher, uh, like more file size. So okay. PNG is not compressed, JPEG's compressed. So Reddit kind of doesn't like PNGs too much. It gets a little finicky. So I always just stay with JPEGs. All right. So now we looked at you know creating some free stuff. Oh, sorry. So now we've looked at creating some free stuff, looked at free substance player, but what if we just want to go gangbusters and we want to start from scratch? So Substance Alchemist here is a way to create material creations, rapid iterations of it. So here was one I had started with, a nice flooring tile. Again, just loading the material in, you already get your base color, your normal map, your roughness, you know, your, your, all your different material maps. Not too shabby. Well, now I can start you know, changing this up, like adding some age to it, you know, adding the story to it. I can add different color variations to it if I want. If I like that one, that's great. I can move on to my next one. So again, now I can start mixing and matching materials. So I just combine a tile material with a concrete material just because I wanted to. I wanted to create, you know, start getting a little crazy with it. Start you know, thinking outside the box a little bit. So that's two of them. Here's a third one we can create. And again, this is just examples I was playing with to create materials like rapidly, all from one file. So the original wood materials for Reddit were created using, there's, so there's 13 different ones that were created from one single image. Not too bad. So if you get a file from your manufacturer, that's all you need. You just need one swatch. And you can start creating rapid creations for them. Not too bad. So what if I like these? That's great, I like that. So now I can go and I can export all of these too. I can export my current view. And again, I can do, I can create a sub, an SBSAR, SBSAR file that I can use too from now on. Or I can create different, you know, I can create PNG, I can create an EXR, I can create a PNG if I want. You know, again, so I can export all those. Again, here was a nice SBSAF file I just downloaded from Substance Sources. So now I can bring that into I can bring that into Alchemist, and I can have full access to all of the different parameters all inside here. So I can change the stitching on this. I can change. <laughs> kind of cool, right? Mm -hmm. I can change the position of it. Can you change the grout color of the tile? Can I change the grout color of the tile? Yeah, if I would have set it up to do that, but I was just playing around. Yeah. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So you can get really crazy with it. You can do so much stuff with it. I love it. It's fun. So back to that SBS AR file. So again, these are all like the intelligence built into it. We can even change, you know, and just go, we can go crazy with it. Or if we wanted to completely start from scratch, we can create a new material. Um, over here on the left-hand side, we have a couple different base materials that we can start with. So say I want to create like a brick pattern on my floor. Where's the brick? Ross light. I can throw this over here. Now I have a bunch of different filters, much like in Photoshop. So say I want to create, oh, I don't know, some pavement, like a pavement pattern. There's my pavement pattern. I can change the brick spacing. I can change the corner roundness. Kind of cool. So I can start creating a bunch of different materials, a bunch of different variations of these materials extremely quickly. And if I like, I can save that out and I can bring it into Revit now. So, yeah. Um, you were showing export. What file format do you export as an option to go into Revit? JPEG. JPEG. Yep. So I can go over here, I can hit export, I can go to my current view. I can just hit JPEG right here. Are there any tiling issues? 
Nope. It, so there is a tiling feature in here. So if you get a tile from a manufacturer and it's not seamless, there's a tiling feature in here. So you can go kind of like in Photoshop, content aware. It just came out. It's pretty sweet. So you pretty much take what you do in Photoshop, creating repeating patterns. You can do all that with an alchemist now too. So. All right. So now that I've created my materials, you know, I use some ones from Revit. I use some from free. I created my own. Now I can go back into Revit. So say I like <laughs> my textures go. So I have a couple wood materials. There's some of the brick materials that I've created. So now I can take, all right, who's seen this trick? You can drag and drop straight into Revit and replace it instead of clicking here, going to find it. I can literally just click and drag my materials over it and automatically replaces it. Kind of a cool little shortcut. So now I can take you know, so my AO map, my roughness map, and I want to use my normal map. So again, I can close that. Now I can go in here. I'm going to change this from a height map to a normal map because I don't want black splotchiness. I can hit OK, and now I can continue with my rendering. So. Once my, once my, yeah. How do I set up the values of it? Yep. So if you click on it, you have the different, so you can change, you can invert it, or you can do, again, I, I just replaced this with a wood material. I should have done it with a layered material, like we talked about, stupid me, because it's a rock material. So I can change the roughness values here. I can change this to like 0 .08. It's going to make it a little bit more reflective. 0 .08 is the highest. So zero, a value of 0 is completely mirror-like. So when we're doing metals, it's going to be around 0 .3, 0 .2 for super polished materials. Typically, woods are around 0 .04 to 0 .5 range, that type of stuff. So once my material is textured, no, I don't want to save. I don't want to save. So we're going to look at Autodesk Ray Tracer. So this is a sample project straight from Revit. So we have, ah, oh geez. Come on, mouse. Work with me. So on the left, we have our legacy materials render. Not bad, right? Not too bad. On the right-hand side, we have the same image, same lighting setup, with some new physically accurate materials applied to it. Just using Revit render in the cloud. So we can see how it's accurately you know, responding to light. Some of the shadows are a little bit rougher just because of the roughness map on the material. Again, these are all out-of-box materials from Revit. I didn't put any new ones in there. So. so when we do Revit render in the cloud, we have a couple different options here. Typically, when I'm testing materials out, I always put it into what well, is in realistic mode right now so I can see the scaling, if the scaling is correct, things like that. Then once I just want to see how it's looking, I'll do a quick render. I'm not going to do it right now just because we don't want to sit here and watch a render just sit there and chug. You know, that'd be super boring. So we can set up a different render region. So if I know I just want to look at the floor, I can just you know, set up my render region. I can hit. You know, I can hit draft mode, see how it's looking, see if the scaling is correct too, see if the reflections are accurately responding to it. One really cool thing though, the default Revit render engine is the same one that's in the cloud. So we can be, if we have a pretty sweet machine, we can you know, do it on our machine or we can do it in the cloud too. So we'll get the same results, just two different ways to do it. So I'll typically do render in the cloud because I want to keep working. I don't want to use my local machine yet. So back under view. We have render in the cloud. So we'll get a couple different options here. This is pretty cool. I really like this. So, so you pick your room. You can go still image. You can do panorama. You can do stereo panorama, or you can do an illuminance one. I always do stereo panorama because I like to have it on my phone, which we're going to show in a sec. So get your QR code scanners ready. We're about to show some cool stuff. Um, you can set the render quality, too. Standard, you get a free one if you do render in the cloud. So it's not bad. 
you know, again, if you don't want to use your local machine, then you can send it straight to the cloud to see what it looks like. We can do the medium size, or we can do the image size here. I typically stay around nine megapixels, which is pretty good enough because it's just going to go on our website, or if it's just going to be passed off to client. I'm not doing this for print yet, so that's where I would go to 16 megapixels. You can set your exposure to advanced. That's what's going to take more lighting calculations. It's going to turn like global illumination on that stuff. So it's going to use all the new materials to you know, produce a better, produce a more photorealistic image. So now we can go check out what that looks like. Again, told you I wasn't going to let you guys sit through a rendering class. So once you send it to the cloud, you can see, you can actually sit there and watch it render. It's kind of cool. So then once it's done, you can see what it's looking like. And then you have a couple different post processing features in here which is pretty nice. So you can crank up the exposure value if you want, kind of simulate how an actual camera's working. Um, we have a couple different options for presets, just for, so we can do neutral, we can do vivid, or we can even you know, get custom with it, and we can turn up the saturation so we don't need to go to Photoshop or anything if we don't want to. We can do all that inside here. We can even turn up the bloom effect. That's gonna simulate like sun coming in, kind of giving a, a nice little blur around our whole image. You know, kind of just add to that realism factor of it. Then if we want, since I told it to be, so this was just a still image. So this one right here is the panoramic image. So now we can use a QR code. I got a bigger image of it, I promise. So if you guys want, you're more than welcome to scan these images and pull them up on your phones. It's kind of cool when it happens. Now this is something you can do for your clients too. Say, hey look, scan my materials. Or scan these QR codes and now it can be a takeaway for them. Yeah, I got them in the handout too, so you guys can. <laughs> Everybody able to get it? Kind of cool, huh? Hmm? Yep. <laughs> so that's the power of these new materials to be able to do this straight inside of Revit. Not too bad, right? It's kind of cool. This is just using default Revit materials, Revit rendering the cloud, like all native Revit stuff. So just a little massaging of the textures, using some of the values. You get a pretty nice looking image, huh? So with the new materials, it's 19 and 20. So 19 started it, 20's got a little bit more materials, and hopefully they're going to keep adding even more to the later versions of it. No, these are all nine megapixel ones. It's like a bucket credit, so like nine bucks. So, not too bad. I'm sorry, what? So, the older versions don't have those channel slots for the materials, so it has to be a 19 and 20. So, all right. So we looked at how to create the materials. We looked at how to find some. We looked at how to render in the cloud. What if we want to do real-time rendering, interactive? We want to walk our clients through an actual space now. We want to do VR and things like that. So the next program we're going to look at, because Revit Live is no longer um, being updated or anything as of 2020, so we're going to look at a program called Enscape. Who's heard of it? Everybody? Yeah. All right, yeah. If you guys haven't, go down their booths, check them out. They're super cool. Really nice people, too. So we're going to look at PBR materials and Enscape. Kind of cool. So I'm going to split screen my window here. So got my view. Again, not too bad here, right? But what if I want to So if I go under manage, so if I just want to quickly replace this carpet material here, I'm already on carpet material. Flooring, I'm going to use a wood material. Just double click, I'm doing it the bad way, I know. 
I'm just going to simply hit apply. Of course, I got to be on the material, right? Oh, no, no, no. I had it paused. I got to resume live updates. There we go. So, not too bad. Very quickly, now I can get a preview, of, you know, real time preview of what my material is going to look like. I can do things in here too, such as, you know, change the time of day. So here I'll spin over here. So now I can see how my materials are interacting with light in a real time sense. Not bad. Look at some of the other materials too. So if I were to go over here and go iron. So this is gonna change my cool fireplace there. So in my material library, I have some iron polish. I'm gonna hit apply. Oh, I gotta switch it over to that one. So iron cast over here. So under the appearance library, I'm gonna go under metals. I'm gonna, let's go under iron. I'm gonna do a nice iron polish. Replace that one there. We can see I have all my roughness values. I have my color, so I can change the color if I want to. I can make it like a, a green painted iron. I'm gonna hit apply. Now we can see how it's interactively responding to light. The shadows are interactive. The reflections are so much better. Like, this is how we can push our real-time rendering to the next level. What if it could look that good in VR too? Which it does. So with Enscape, you can do one-click VR, and now it's gonna look that good the whole time. Now we're able to show our clients what our materials are, or what their buildings are gonna look like, you know, pretty realistically. So you're getting provided samples from different manufacturers. You can take those into Substance Alchemist, make them repeatable, make different variations of those, and you can throw them in here. And it's gonna look, that's how it's gonna look. What time of day is going to look best for, you know, sitting outside on the porch, you know? So we can change that. We can go to different times of day. See? Again, I have confidence knowing my materials are going to look good in all different lighting scenarios because they're physically accurate. They're responding to light. So. We got done a little bit early. Talking a little bit fast. Any questions? Sure. Sometimes it's just a roughness value, and sometimes it's being run by. Yep. Is there a different template for that, or how do you swap between just like the slider and then maybe the by So that's a good point. So the black, the darker the, the darker the black, the shinier it'll be. So if we're just using a straight roughness tab, it's just going to be smooth the whole way. There's not going to be any surface imperfections for it. But. Could you put your email up just so? Sure. I have, I have business cards up here too if you guys want. So, again, thank you everybody for coming to the class. You know, again, we can still take questions, but. Yeah.